Hi, and welcome to this video. Today, I'll, I will be talking about walls and gates from lead code. So let's get started. Um, the question clearly states it doesn't want you to return anything and modify, modify everything in place. And I will be solving this question using the breadth first search. OK, so let's get started. We have two gates over here, and both of these gates are represented by zero. The empty rooms are presented by infinity, and a wall or an obstacle is presented by minus one. Now, whenever we start with the BFS, the first thing we do is we want to map out our grid, because this here is a grid. So the height would be the length of the room. The width would be also the length of the room, but we'll take um, the index zero. And then we create our queue or our array to store the data as we iterate through. <clears throat> now bear with me here. So we're going to iterate via the height. And as we go through the height, we will also be iterating the width. Now in this case, this means that we're going to be starting from here. And as we have, as we have this height, we're going to go to the width and as, when we're finished with the width i shifts to down here and then we iterate and so on and so forth now as we go through the i and j so let's say you're here so this is presented by zero which is the gate so if it's a zero what i want you to do is i want you to append this value i and j okay so this is sort of like 50% of the solution already. And I and when we're doing BFS, I want you to take a look at this and, and understand this quite well. So we get the height, we get the width, we create a queue, and we basically iterate through the height and width until we reach the value zero. Now, why zero? Because that's the gate. And if we have the if we have the location of this of the gate, we can then start to measure um, the distances from here to the rooms so for example on the, on this in this particular gate here this would be one and this would be one next this would be two and this would be two and this would be also two because it's closer to this one here and this will be three so basically what we're doing is we're filling out what's the closest gate to each empty box right here and by having this template you're able to solve any bfs solution any yeah, problem <laughs> this is the solution so this is sort of the first part of it now once you have created a queue that contains all the coordinates of the gates you're now going to simply unpack them because now you have the row and the column and you will say that because this is um, here and this is a gate you're going to just add one to whatever value that's already in there. So now what does that mean? Let's call something distance. And basically, we're going to add one. So in our case here, this was the row and the column. And for this row and column, the distance to it will be one. So this here, the, when you extract this value, it will have basically zero because it presents a gate and the distance to it immediately from which, whichever side is one so now i have the distance that is one i can say for dx dy and i'll explain this in a minute if i just quickly take these here like that this would be minus one this would be one and this would be minus one now basically these are the coordinates to go right and left so one zero for example would be here minus one zero would be here zero one would be up here and zero minus one would be down here and these can be represented by saying r so rho plus dx so in this case it will be the one and the c column plus dy and i'll explain this in a second further now if this value r is within the walls of this grid so it is less than or equal to zero 
or it's less than the height and the C is also within the walls of this grid and the room if you would take this value C and R so now, so now with these you've confirmed that hey this new RC is within the value here so for example when it's up here it will be more than the height so it will not satisfy this condition but if it's right here it would satisfy the condition and over here to the left, it says that a, an empty room is presented by this value. So I'm just going to copy this value right there. So I copied it. So basically, hey, if this is an empty room, then the distance that you have calculated, I want you to add that back to the, to the grid value. So here you would see if this was one zero, so it would be right here, and you have the distance here is one, so please add the value one to here. And then what you want to do is you want to append these values of R and C, which is the empty room right here, to further explore it later. So in this case, as you go through the queue here, so you've, you've gotten this and you've gotten this both appended. But what about this and, and these other empty rooms? So basically, these empty rooms are added to this queue, so they are further explored. So in the next iteration, when it pulls this out, let's say it's right here because you, append, you appended it in the queue, um, it will have the value 1. And now the next one would be a value 2 if it satisfies this condition. Now let's hit Submit. And it has a variable column missing. Oh, yeah because this should be a queue. As you can see, I've done this a couple of times already. And I see I've also done a mistake here. This should have been RC. And there we are. So now it's solved using Brett's first search. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any question, please ask me in the comments section below.